In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use a duplicate special to get this rope that we've placed around our object, the NURBS to poly here, and we're going to duplicate special and get it to be created all the way up our handle here using a single operation. Now there are a few things we do want to set up before we do our duplicate special because I do plan on texturing the high poly object and baking that texture over to the low polygon object at the same time we bake over our normal map surface to our low poly game object. So first we want to go ahead and clean up the sword a bit so we can continue to use the UV map on it because as you can see when we duplicated this sword from our game object if you go and you take a look at our UV map you can see that this sword, the high poly sword that we're making modifications to, still has its UV map applied to it. And you can see that really well if I turn on shaded you can tell, yes, it's still UV mapped. So we want to go ahead and make sure we maintain a solid UV map while we're working with this so we can texture our high poly before we bake it. So I'm going to go into the full mode here. Actually, I'll open up this. And let's keep our scene clean here. There's a few things we know we don't need. This was our target, our source, and our extruded surface. We know we don't need these, so we'll go ahead and just select them and press delete. This will keep our scene really clean. And this here was a rope for our handle. So let's go ahead and rename this. Just double click on it in your outliner, of course. This was shown in the previous video. You can right click on any of the perspective panes, go down to perspective, outliner, select that, and then it'll open this window. And I'm just going to double click on this. And I'm going to call this a rope handle. So I'll just give it a name rope handle. And I want to clean up that edge that we put on this object. So I'm going to select the rope handle. I'm going to hit control plus H to hide it. You can see it's hidden now. And I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to right click, go to edges, and just double click this ring going around the bottom that we created and hit control and delete. That way I get rid of the vertices and the edge. Now I'll select my rope handle again and I'm going to go ahead and hit shift plus H to unhide it. And we want to be able to texture this. So of course, if we want to texture something, it has to have a UV map. Well, this will already have a UV map because this was extruded from a curve, as you recall from the previous video. So it's already created with a UV map and we just have to make a few minor adjustments. So let's make sure we just have this visible, right? So to make just this rope visible, one trick you can do is you can go up to show, isolate selected, and select view selected. And you'll notice it hid our sword and now we can only look at our rope for our handle. So let's go ahead and go into the UV maps. Go ahead and select the UV tool. And again, you can right click and go to perspective and find your UV texture editor. And with that selected, we can kind of zoom out here and get an idea of where our edges are. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We want this edge on the inside of the handle to be our seam. So let's right click and we're going to select edges. I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to select a ring going around it. And I can see it selected this one here. That means that the actual seam is probably on the outside. That's not where we want it. We want it on the inside so we don't get any issues whenever we texture this. So let's go ahead and select it there. And then we're just going to come up here and we're going to cut it. And then we're going to right click, go to shell, select one side of the shell. Just press W on your keyboard and we're going to move it over to the other side. And that'll put this seam on the outside. So now that seam that was in the middle is now on the outside. So this is our seam instead of the outside ring being the seam, which we didn't want. You can zoom in a little bit. And I usually just line this up by eye. I just kind of eye it, try to get them right on top of each other. And then we'll right click, we'll go to edges. And you want to kind of hold down, you just click off and then hold down your shift key and don't get the outer ring. You don't want the outer edges. You just want these inner ones. Okay, you don't want, let me zoom in real close. You don't want these ones. You just want these, this edge here that we want to stitch together. I'm going to zoom out and I can hold down control and shift and that will select anything. That's like no matter what I marquee over, it's going to select it. So control and shift and get the rest of them. And then I'll just come up here and I'll just go ahead and stitch those together. Now, if I right click select shell, I can select the whole thing. Now, because we are going to be baking this onto a low poly object, we don't have to worry about the positioning. So we're just going to move this off to the side over here. Anywhere is fine. It does not matter where we place this on our UV map. And we need to apply a texture to it so that way we can see what we're working with. That way we can kind of size this up right. So go ahead and uh, right click and we're going to select off of it and right click, go to object mode, select the object. And we're going to go ahead and right click on it, go down to assign new material. And we're going to select a file, 
because we want to assign our testing texture to this, <laughs> if I can pronounce it right. So I go to Lambert, and when the Lambert comes up, now it's kind of hard sometimes to see things when you create a new texture because now you got all these things that didn't open it up immediately for us. So one thing we can do is we, with this object selected, we can go up to Edit, Delete by Type, and Select History. And that's going to clear up the history. Now we can see it's Lambert 3. Now we know which texture belongs to this. Let's go ahead and select color, and we're going to click the little checker box, select file, and of course we're going to navigate to our image that we have for testing our texture. So I'm going to go up to images and select my UV testing, select open, and you can see I need to make some adjustments to this UV map. So I'm just going to right click, go to shell, select it, and press R to get my scale. And I'm just going to scale it in and kind of just eye it. I'm not going to bother doing a UV unwrap. I'm just going to eye it and make sure it looks decent. This is usually how I handle these. I just make sure that the numbers or whatever look decent on it. And I think that looks pretty decent. They don't look warped or anything. So a texture would apply to this just fine. And again, we can go ahead and just kind of remember where you put these things. But it doesn't matter at this point. You can stick them anywhere. Just make sure that this does not overlap the ones that are on our sword because that will create a problem because we are going to combine this to the sword when we're done. So don't put this inside of this box where we UV mapped all of our sword elements on the high poly sword object. Just stick it outside of it somewhere off to the side. It's fine. Let's go ahead go to object mode. We can select off our sword here. Now we're ready to go ahead and duplicate this. So now it's prepped. And the reason that we did all that is because when we duplicate this, just like we duplicated our sword and it maintained the UV map, we want this duplicated object to maintain a UV map in the same exact position on the UV map. So we only have to texture this once and it will texture all the other sword pieces. So that's kind of the idea behind that. And that's why we wanted to UV map it, set it all up. So when we duplicate it, we don't have to set the UV map up on every single one of the duplicates. We only set it up on one and it'll duplicate that UV map to all of them. So they'll all be ready to go, ready for painting. So it's usually a good idea. Set your UV map up before you set up your duplicates like this when you do a duplicate special. So now we need to bring back in our sword so we can see it as we do our duplicate. So let's go up to show, isolate selected, and uncheck view selected. And we also no longer need to look at this UV map. So let's just go up and select our full view. And let's zoom out a little bit. Now make sure, actually while we're doing this, go ahead and select the outliner because we might need to be able to easily select the rope handle object. It's just easier for us. So with the rope handle selected, we're going to go up here to Edit, Duplicate Special, and you're going to go to the little box next to Duplicate Special because we have to set it up first. So one of the first things we can see is we want to create a copy of this object. We want to group it under, and we're going to set this to New Group because if we set it to Parent, it would just be out in the open because the parent is the world already. Or you could, if it was in a group and you were duplicating it, you could group it to the world. But again, it's already in the world because this, if it's not in a group, means that it is part of the world group. And we want to set it to a new group, so it's going to create all these inside of a little folder here, a group folder, and there's just going to be a list of all these ropes and we've got to set up our translate. Now for every one of these, like if I were to set the number of copies to 50, that's going to make 50 duplicates, right? And where do I want it to place each duplicate in relation to the previous duplicate? That's what translate means. So if I want it to be, you know, going on the X, Y, or Z, whichever direction, of course we want to go up with this. So we definitely want to be setting our translate to the Y, so X, Y, Z. So we have to kind of determine, like, we'll go ahead and set this to a 1 for right now, just to show you how you determine this, because your positioning on your rope and your size of your rope may be different than mine. So this is how you determine how you set your rope. So the first thing I want to do is I do want to line this rope up a little bit closer to the base of the handle. So I'm going to move it down a little bit. So that looks pretty good. It's not touching the bottom. It's just about right there is good. And I'm going to try to duplicate this one time, set it a one so I can find the exact height that I want to come up from this. So I'll set it to a one. Leave your scales alone. Everything else can pretty much be unchecked. All right, and I'm just going to set this number of copies to a one because I only want to make one copy because I'm just doing a test for now. I'm going to go ahead and click apply. Ah, I can see that's way too high. I want to go about half that because you look, it went up about one and two and now it's up way too high. So I don't want to go that far. So I'm just press delete and I'm going to select my rope again, my rope handle. 
And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to drop this down by half. And this is how you determine before you make multiple copies how far up you want to go. So I'll try half of that and I'll go ahead and click apply. And that looks great. That's perfect. If I select off and kind of look at it, that will look nice whenever I have several of them. So let me go ahead and select it again. And I'm going to go ahead and try to do maybe let's try 70 of these and see how many how far up the rope would get that. So I'm going to have the top one selected, not the bottom one. You definitely don't want to accidentally select the bottom one and duplicate over the tops. And I'm going to go ahead and select apply. And as you can see, that gave me a whole bunch of them, but it gave me a bit too many. All right. So I can hit control Z if I wanted, or I could just maybe even just delete them. So it's however you want to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and try deleting these. So I will select all these up at the top I don't want to delete my sword so I'll unselect that and that looks perfect that looks like it'll get just those so I'll just press delete on the keyboard and there we have it now I have all these nice little ropes going clear up the handle and it kind of probably looks weird because we have a texture applied to them so if you press five on your keyboard there you can kind of see what it's going to look like when we texture it because now we'll have this little twine going all the way down our handle so with Press 5 on your keyboard and you can get a better idea because with the UV testing texture, it might look a bit weird. Like, why would I want it to look like that? Anyways, what we want to do is come over here and we can see that we have our group and we accidentally created two groups. So let's go ahead and select this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to hold down our middle mouse button and we're going to drop this out of that group. So you just grab it and drag it to the world and that's going to pull it out of this group. And we definitely don't want to lose this one because that's part of our rope. So we can go ahead and middle mouse click it and let's just drag it into group two all right so now we have all our little rope handles here and this group here we'll just double click this and we're just going to call this our handle underscore ropes and that way we have a nice little group of them and you can select this top group and just press delete on it so in the next video we're going to start taking a look at how we can apply materials to our object and adjust some colors on them in order to get a better understanding of how we can get a good base color going before we begin texturing. If you have any questions or comments, please post below the video on brainpoof.com and click subscribe to follow us on YouTube.